Hi, welcome to Loopy Mabel's Closet. My name is Jane and in today's vlog it's all about my latest make, my Jenny Pants by Closet Case Patterns. So hi and welcome back, thanks for joining me today. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because that really does make my day. And uh, if you like my videos, please don't forget to hit that like button too. So yes, it's all about these trousers that I'm wearing. I'll stand up in a minute and show you and I'll obviously put pictures up of me parading about in the garden as I do. Um, so I've had this pattern for quite some time. So if you've never heard of this pattern, it's the Closet Case Patterns and it's called the Jenny Overalls and Pants pattern and I chose to do the uh, cropped pants or trousers. I was originally going to do the bibbed version because I've got all the bib tools, the what do you call it, the uh, bib and brace set, I've got all that to do it. But when I actually came to cut it out, I just thought, no, you know what, I'm just going to go for the trousers. It's my first time working with denim for, well, since I've come back to dressmaking. And I just thought, oh, let's just take one step at a time. Um, and if, if, I, if everything goes to plan, I can always make the um, dungaree version next time. So everything started off fine. Uh, put the fab, what pre wash the fabric. I'm doing good doing that. I know it's an absolute chore to do but I pre-washed my fabric just in case they were going to sh you know the fabric was going to shrink in the wash so I did all that got it all dry smells gorgeous mine that's the best part of pre-washing the fabric this fabric smells absolutely gorgeous well, my Lenore, I've got Lenore on and it's, it smells absolutely lovely great printed the pattern out so I was originally going to do the 12 size 12 but um the finished measurements would have been too big so I went for the size 10 thinking there's no way I'm going to get in the size 10 here I am sat in the size 10 uh, the fabric I used I've got a little bit left before I go on is um, this gorgeous mustard ochre stretch denim I got from first for fabrics and I've had this for months and months I think I'd bought it just after Christmas and um, always planned to do this pattern in this fabric but as I say I got that little bit extra to do the bib version so I have got a little bit left but I'm sure it'll come in useful for maybe I might be able to get some shorts out of it maybe not that I wear shorts but you know I've got I think I might have enough just to get a pair of or even a little bag a tote bag might be quite nice but anyway so I've got a little bit left but it's absolutely brilliant fabric because it's got that little bit of stretching so first new to denim and first to stretch denim so I was going quite well got my machine ready I even put um, a jeans needle in and set up all my overlocker and I even changed the far left thread uh, left the three white cones on but I've changed the left thread onto that rainbow overlocking thread just to jazz up the inside so that because normally I just stick with white and do white on everything and I thought no come on put, put change the fact change the the uh, yarn color so I did that too and got my matching sewing machine thread thought go this is going great put all the fabric out um put the lay the pattern out goes and makes a cup of coffee comes back and one of my cats, well, namely Geordie, very kindly, I'll just show you, very kindly left me a nice parcel of cat sick on my pattern, which had soaked through to the other side. Luckily, it hadn't gone onto the fabric. So I had to quickly wipe that off and get that dry because I thought I'm not printing that out again. So I got that dried and then comes to putting the pockets 
I mean, the instructions are great with closet case. You know, there's the inventory of all the pattern pieces that you need. And then obviously you choose which pieces belong to whichever, whichever you're doing. Obviously I was doing view C. So I was doing view C, which is the cropped or the long or the cropped trouser. I was doing view C. So obviously picked all the pieces for view C or so I thought. But I think I was reading into it more than what I should have done because when I come to do put the pockets, cut the pockets out and it says, you know, you cut the pockets out in a, in a like a fabric lining. So I picked this pretty leftover fabric that I had left from my French dark dress. This gorgeous, uh, I think it's just a cotton poplin. And I thought that's, that would go lovely with the mustard colour jeans so i thought that'd make a really pretty pocket inside so i'll cut that out have just enough to do the pockets and then come to sew them up i misread it i thought it, when it said pocket it has a bottom pocket facing or lining and a top pocket lining i just thought well i don't need the top pocket lining because i'm not doing the top Part, thinking it was relating to the bib so I just cut the bottom pocket lining out comes to try and sew it onto the trouser leg and I thought well it didn't work so that stumped me straight away I thought well where's the pockets I've only got half a pocket so then I realized that when it said the top pocket it meant the top part of the pocket lining in the in the trouser so it comes to cut out the corresponding top part of the pocket I didn't have enough of that left. So I thought, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not recutting it all out again. So I, obviously I've got the bottom pockets in that. And then I went through my scrap bag and just did the top part of the pocket in that. So they're all like similar colour schemes, but they don't match, but it's inside my trouser. It's still really pretty. So that was the first hurdle. So, okay, carried on with that. Did exactly as it said stitched the pockets together and then I came to this section on page let me just find the page because I was on this page forever and a day so obviously recut the top part of the pocket the pocket linings out I think that's what stumped me because I just assumed that pocket was for the bib who doing the bib bit and this pocket was for me when in fact they they are both both parts of what you need for the the trouser so anyway i fathomed it out and recut it out in those fabrics and then coming to put the pockets on to the the side of the leg well two hours two hours it took me and it just wouldn't work so i just thought right i'll do a stay stitch because when i pinned it it didn't look right pinned and i thought well maybe because it's pinned it doesn't look right so I'll stitch it on but i just did a stay stitch so i just did a really long stay stitch and it just didn't look right at all. My angles, my pocket was going off on an angle. So two hours of pinning, stitching, unpicking, repinning, rereading, no further forward. I thought, what the heck am I doing wrong? This is ridiculous. So not only did I do the pockets wrong, that started, the cat was sick to start with. Then, then I only cut one set of pockets out. So then I got over that hurdle. Then I got this hurdle and I was literally four hours in and I hadn't done anything. So John, bless him, said, well, have you read the have you read the instructions right? And I said, yeah, I've read the instructions right, but mine, mine just doesn't look like this. He said, well, go and get your pattern piece out. So got the pattern piece out. Said pattern piece with six stain all over it. And typical of me, honestly, seriously, I'm mean, like a bull in a china shop. I really must learn to read things first. When you tape your pattern pieces together, you've got the option. You don't have to put the pockets in. You can leave the pockets out. And it just say, so I just cut the whole pattern piece out. But if I read it properly, which I didn't do, it says cut along this angled, uh, these lines for your pocket fronts. Well, I was trying to put my pockets to there and the angles weren't right. As you can see, that's the angle it should have been. And when I re read it and thought, oh my word, that's why and then obviously i scored scored the line that was mine 
And the mascarin tool, and you can see that's the bit that I should have not cut, and that's the bit in the end, two pieces that I had to cut off because I didn't read the pattern properly. And then the pockets fit absolutely fine to the angle of the leg. So that was the next hurdle done. So going great guns, got it all all stitched, got the pocket stitched. And I'll just stand up and show you what I'm on about. So get all the top stitching. And this bulk was my next hurdle, putting the zip in. So I did all that bit and I, I stopped last night. I thought, right, I'll carry on and do the rest today. So I got up really early and I was in my sewing room for nine o'clock. Well, to put the zip in from nine o'clock this morning till one o'clock lunchtime. I'm seriously, could I not get this darn zip in right? It, it's There's a lot of bulk. If anybody else has done this pattern, there is a lot of bulk going on here. Now, I don't know whether I've done it right, but I follow the pattern and getting a zip in neatly with your zipper foot over that bulk to get a straight line was nigh on impossible. My zipper foot would, didn't want to go because it kept not banging into this and going wonky. Absolute horrendous. So anyway, eventually I, I just... So what I did was I, I, I used a 12 inch zip and the pattern asks for a 7 inch zip. I always use a longer zip than I cut off what I don't need. So I thought, right, I'll zip the zip all the way down past what I need and then I'll zip it back up. So I did that. Great. So then I come to do the second side and put, uh, did all this section. And then you have to put your foot right down in that pocket right the way down I thought there's no way my foot is going to go right but it does if you wangle it and I put it unstitched it but what did I forget to do I forgot to bring the zipper back up so my zipper was right down here and I'd already so I'd stitched all this so there's no way I could get the zipper oh night absolute nightmare so I had to unpick the whole of the zip again Oh, it was an absolute nightmare. The whole of this floor is covered in gold, orange thread, unpicked threads all over. It's just everywhere. And um, it was just by which time it was one o'clock. So four hours, four hours of picking, stitching, unpicking, stitching. It was just horrendous marking. Then obviously I had to unpick it all and I pressed it all with the iron. And then obviously the heat of the iron erased my marking stitches. It was just an absolute nightmare. That at that point, I thought, right, that's it. I'm not. I'm not making them. But that's not me. It would have only bugged me. So I went back to basics again. I thought, right, start again. So the whole zip was out. I was back to putting the zip in. So I did it really slowly. I kept the zip heart right up, and I just literally squeezed my zipper foot past the zipper head, and then that that bulk. I, I don't know. I don't know whether I've done it right, but I've got a load of bulk. Um, so anyway, I eventually got it in. So about half past one, I got the zip in. So that was that. So yeah, so so getting that zip in and getting that to be just right was absolute mission, I have to say. I'm not going to lie. And there is an option as well that you can do um, your waistband so it opens on both sides so there's two zips so zip on the right zip on the left and you have to um, see whether you can get the trousers on with just the one zip and if you struggle to get them over your hips then obviously there's the option to put the two zips and I was thinking well there's hope by which point I hadn't tried tried it on to see if I could get it over my hip and I thought if these don't go over my hips there is no way I'm going to go through this rigmarole again and put another zip in that side. But luckily, I didn't have to do that. So that was a bonus, shall we say. Then, when I sat just contemplating life as you do, thinking, God, this is horrendous, looked across at my sewing table. I forgot that I had specifically got my Guterman threads, my jeans threads and my top stitching thread. And I hadn't used them. 
completely forgot so forgot to use my threads so okay i thought well we'll come in use they'll come in handy for the next pair i make because i will be making them seriously you'd think not wouldn't you but i am going to make them again um so i forgot to do that what else it doesn't end there um what else wouldn't work yeah try and get your foot it tells you to put your foot right i'll show you the picture if you haven't done this pattern right so that's the right side and that's the pocket that we've just done it takes you've got to take you've got to do this top stitching and then you've got to take your foot right right beyond that pocket right deep down into the pocket and i thought there's no way my, i'm going to get but you do you just have to like wangle it a little bit and then once you get to the bottom you've then got to pivot inside the pocket and stitch across which like closes the bottom of the zip so i managed to do that it's um the art artist art normally i think closet case pattern instructions are pretty good but i just found some of them confusing i was thinking is it referring to me is it referring to the dungaree pit part i don't know i just I, maybe i was just having a bad sewing sewing project i don't know and then obviously then after that it was great guns i don't think i had any more problems i don't think i think i think i was all right after that yeah no so I'd, and i didn't have to do any adjustments in the fit luckily otherwise i definitely would have thrown them in the bin and i did the cropped the cropped version so you turn them up half an inch and then turn them up two inches then you top stitch the hem but obviously i'll put some pictures up of me wearing them so you can see me wearing them in the garden and they go really lovely with with this top which wasn't planned because i made this top before christmas um but it does go really lovely with this top and i've got a few other uh, blouses that i've got planning to make that are going to go perfect with these trousers so watch out for those vlogs and i'll do a little bit of a lookbook with those blouses that i make because i think it'll make a lovely uh, n probably a nice module actually and i've got quite a few of my crochet capelets which go lovely as well and i'll pop a couple of pictures of them up so all in all it was an absolute beast i'm not gonna lie um i really was thinking this is not for me jeans or these type of trousers are not for me too technical i mean i can put a zip in I've never had a problem putting a zip in. It's just this getting this zip in and getting across up beyond that bulk. So if anybody else has made these trousers and have used like a, a medium weight denim, and did you did you find you had the bulk and could, did you have a trouble with your, your zipper foot going past that bulk, or was it just me? I've, did I do have I done something wrong? I mean, the the look right now I've made them, so I don't I don't know. And seriously i put the waistband on piece of cake the waistband fitted absolutely perfect went on like a dream and then i did the little um i found an old-fashioned button I'll show you again in my button tin um which i thought was perfect and i love this little tab that you do um to put your fasten your button on i think it's really sweet and then obviously my pockets were but obviously i forgot to do my top stitch and thread so that's a bit of a disaster but yeah the fit they're a little bit slack loose on the the tummy but that's, that's absolutely fine and the fit great in the crotch still covered in i'm still covered in bits of unpicking thread they're absolutely everywhere i'm gonna have to get the hoover out hoover out tomorrow and hoover the whole house because it's just covered in bits of gold thread everywhere so that was a bit of a mission so probably four or five hour sewing project from start to finish it probably took me about two days it's just that zip was an absolute nightmare but now i've got them made and i'm wearing them absolutely love them and i'm going to make them again now i know what to look out for when i make them again i know i have to cut out two lots of pocket linings make sure i've got enough of that before i start don't let the cat in and vomit all over my pattern remember to put my top stitching thread in and my jeans thread in um, and just take my time putting the zip in so if i remember all those things i'll be going i'll be doing absolutely brilliantly so all in all i'm not going to say it was a really lovely project because it wasn't 
um, it is now I've finished it and maybe it's something else, another learning curve to read the instructions, which I have been doing. I've, but the, the last few sewing, sewing projects I've done, I've got the instructions, made a cup of coffee and just sat and read the instructions from start to finish, making sure I've got it all in my head and I've got everything I need. And clearly I didn't do it on this one. So that'll teach me and take a little bit more time with putting the zip in. So if anybody can tell me before I go, if there is a thinner zipper foot, I at my machine's a brother, that's my that's my zipper foot. If there's a thinner version to that, please tell me and I'll maybe get one because it was a bit of a mission getting it past that bulk. So it's done, the maid, my swearing's over, the air was blue this morning, the air was blue, I'm telling you. And um but I will I'll be making them again. Loving the stretch denim, this little bit of stretch, really comfy and I'm really liking it. And I use my clapper, my new wooden clapper on the seams. That is a game changer, definitely takes a bit of time, but it's worth it because you do get those flat seams, which I'm gonna go back and put the clapper on my Pietra pants that I made, you know, the green ones I made and the pink ones I made. I'll put the um, link for the vlog up there and put the clapper on those seams as well because they're still not pressed properly because I didn't, I didn't have the clapper then. Um, what else? When I went through my scrap box to get the lining for my pockets, I've got quite a lot of leftover jersey when I made my Somerset t-shirts and my Silene t-shirt. Got quite, you know, a quarter of a metre left at least. I was keeping it maybe thinking I could do like contrasting cuffs or maybe contrasting neckbands on future future t-shirts. But then I thought, oh, I wonder if I could get a pair of undies out of them. And because I've got the, um, I think lots of people have made, is it the Acacia? Uh, knicker pattern so I have ordered some pretty uh, knicker elastic so I'm waiting for that to come and I'm going to have a go at making some undies. So when I was printing off the uh, pattern for the Acacia pants which is a free pattern by Megan Nielsen I thought I wonder if there's any more free pants knicker patterns out there so I did a bit of a google and I found I think five in total five different pants patterns which were free so I've downloaded them and I've ordered this knicker elastic and I've got my fabric. So I'm going to do a little vlog on making these five different pants and do a little bit of a pattern review and tell you what I think and just show you them. It's not something I would, there's not something I would have planned doing is making knickers because I can get a pack of five from Tesco for about eight quid and they're perfectly adequate. Or Primark, I get a pack of ten from Primark for about five pound perfectly adequate for the length that you wear them for then when the you know when they start to go you just took them out and get some more it's not something I would have planned on making but I just thought well I've got this spare fabric and all I need is this pretty um knicker elastic and I thought oh, I'll have a go it's the same really with the long sleeve tees you can, I can get just as good from Primark you know it's not something I would have planned on doing and buying fabric for but now I'm really in, you know now I'm really into my sewing I'm enjoying the process and I've got some t-shirts to make. I'm going to have a go at making some vests because I've got all this fabric and um, may as well use it up and, you know, fill my drawers. So I've got that coming. So watch the space for how I get on with making my own undies. So what else have I been up to this week? Well, I don't know if you know, but I obviously on my crochet channel, I sell wool and um I think with everybody being at home, self-isolating and social distancing, I think they must have thought, right, I'm going to get my knitting needles out, my crocheting hooks out, and I'm going to, you know, use my time. I've sold my wool as literally just flown out, literally 50, 60 orders of wool a day. I'm now, this is like into week two, and I've hardly got any wool left. Um, obviously, I'm not going to restock it at the moment. And um, the sales, the wool, purely from the sales of my wool, I have trekked myself. I've trekked myself to a new machine. And it's coming tomorrow. And it uh, is the Baby Lock cover stitch. I've been wanting one of these for absolutely ages. And I just thought, right, well, the money I've made from the sales of all that wool, which I would never have made, in this short of period of time, believe me, it would have 
I, I would have sold the wool over months, months and months. And I've literally sold it all in just under two weeks. So I, I just thought, right, you know, I'm going to use that money to treat myself. And it's funny because John, bless him, if I, I have to be careful when I say things to him because I could say to him, oh, I don't I don't like my engagement ring anymore. I, I fancy a new, a new engagement ring or a new diamond. He'd go, come on then, let's go and have a look. Let's go to the jewellers and we'll go and have a look. And seriously, you would, he's so sweet like that. So I just said to, I just said to him, last week god all the money I'm, I'm making off this wool i wonder if i should treat myself to a, a new to a new machine a cover stitch machine and he went oh what's what's one of them and i was telling him and i said yeah but they're not cheap the baby lock if they're not cheap and he went well how much are they and i told him how much they were and he went well if you if you need it and it's a tool and it's going to help you with your sewing and it's going to you know it's something that you, you're going to use get yourself one just treat yourself he's so sweet I said, yeah, but really expensive and that's a little bit extravagant and a little bit, you know, do I really need it? Do I really need it? No. Um, yeah, but you don't, it doesn't matter, he said. You know, if that's what you want and it's going to help you and it's going to improve your sewing and it's going to improve the finish on your garments that you make, then get it. So anyway, I rang the company up, found a company that sold it in England and I rang them up and cheekily said, well, I'm wanting to buy one of your machines, quite expensive, can you do a discount? And she said, well, if you ring back tomorrow, there's going to be the spring sale and there's going to be 10% off anyway. So I rang back the next day, got the 10% off and it's coming tomorrow. So I can't wait for that. So when I get it, I'll I'll have a play around with it and maybe do a little vlog and show you how, how I get on with it. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, what else? I've been a little bit of up and down this week because um, John isn't too good on his legs lately. And um, he had a, two falls, two falls this week. The first fall he got had the other night when just getting out of bed going to the loo and he just totally lost his balance and fell into the side bedside table with a lamp on and he hit all his chest area here. He's got this massive, because he's, he bruises easily because he's on warfarin and he's got this massive black, I'm not exaggerating, black bruise all the way, all the way around here and around here, bless him, so he's really, really sore. Luckily, he didn't um, fall to the ground. He just he just hit the side cabinet and landed on that. And I managed to jump out of bed quick enough and go around and grab him. Because if, if he'd have fallen to the floor, he would have wedged down in between the bed and the cabinet. And I would never have gotten him up in the night. So that, was, that wasn't very nice. And then he had a fall in the bathroom the other day. And I we between me and him tried to get him back up. He's got no upper strength in his arms, and obviously his legs aren't good. And I could not get him up off the floor. Half an hour, forty minutes, my back was breaking. He was getting tired, so in the end, I had to lie him flat on the bathroom floor, get a pillow. And my son was at work, and I didn't want to ring him up. I couldn't go and get my mum and dad, who lived two doors down, to help me because social was socially isolating, and obviously they're in the vulnerable age. So I didn't want to go down and get them. And I thought I'm not ringing for an ambulance because an ambulance are really busy because of the situation that we're all in. And I thought and if they do come, they're going to take him to hospital and I'll never see him again. And I thought, no. So in the end, I rang my daughter who was like five minutes, ten minutes walk away. And I said, Sophie, you're going to have to come and help me get him up off the floor. Put your mask on, put your gloves on and you're just going to have to. Anyway, so she came, she came, rushed round in the car and she came with the gloves on, a mask on. I put my mask on, I put a mask on John while he was lying on the floor and between the two of us we managed to get him back up on his feet. So that was a bit stressful as well. So we've had a few um, stressful days with him and his legs are just not good at all. So tomorrow I'm going to, tomorrow is Monday, I'm going to ring up the care team and ask if we can get maybe some sort of Zimmer frame for him just to help him because he's not steady at all and his walking stick is just not doing it for him anymore. Uh, I think he needs a frame where he can actually lean on the frame rather than the stick. The stick's too wobbly. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. Uh, but apart from that, we're fine. We still do the conga. We still laugh and joke. We do the conga. I walk behind him when I'm helping him and I, we always, we've done this for years and I go, let's do the conga. And we do, 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 do you know the conga but he can't he can't lift his leg up and kick because if he did he'd keel over so i we do the conga you know let's do do the conga i lift my leg up and he just swears let's all do the conga and he just swears and i just lift my leg up so so we still have fun we still laugh 
um, but you just have a lot of falls and his little legs aren't too good. So, so yes, um, so anyway, on a lighter note, I've got um, obviously my new machine to practice when that comes tomorrow and I'm going to make some pretty blouses that are going to complement these trousers as well. I'll do a lookbook for you as well, maybe, probably next, maybe next weekend. And if my knicker elastic comes in the next few days, I'll make some pretty pants and show you them. Thank you so much for watching today. Thanks for listening and I'd love to read your comments. So if anybody's got any uh, hints and tips on how to get your zip in over across when there's a bulk in the way, let me know, I'd love to know. Um, but until the next time, thanks so much for joining me. Please take care and as always, happy sewing. <laughs>